It's as quick as a BMW M6 in 2005. Uh, a Mitsubishi Lancer Evo FQ400. That's the big one. Well, folks, I'm Ed, uh, and this is Backroad Hero. Uh, this is a Maserati 3200 GT. I recently did a review on it, and uh, an interesting fact uh, came to light. I put uh, a question on the uh, Maserati 3200 owners forum uh, for people to watch the video and comment, and it was genuinely well received. And I've always learned lots uh, because there are other people out there that know much more about uh, individual cars than I do. Um, so thanks first of all for commenting. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it's of some use if you're interested in buying one of these cars. There was one of the members, um, Ian Cullington, basically said, Ed, why are you only quoting 370 horsepower for these cars? Well, that's what, uh, <laughs> that's what the books say. Um, but uh, he said that most of these vehicles um, develop in excess of 400 horsepower. Uh, the uh, couple of owners that have sent me, in fact, actual dyno printouts of the car, uh, one running 409 horsepower, the other one 412. So, so I got to thinking, why on earth would you um, falsely claim uh, that your uh, car is developing less horsepower than it actually does? Now, I do know that in uh, Japan this was widely done. Uh, it was the 276 horsepower, I believe, brigade, uh, the gentleman's agreement for, uh, you know, R34s and the likes. Uh, and they were obviously making much more than that. But, but that was for different reasons uh, completely. Why would a manufacturer uh, falsely claim that their car was 370 horsepower when it was actually making at least 40 horsepower more? For the answer, you've got to delve back into the history um, of ownership and the rivalry between Maserati and Ferrari. I did a bit more investigating and uh, I came up with a, an interesting story. Uh, the 3200 GT was launched um, in October of 1998 at the Paris Motor Show. And the year before that, uh, in 1997, uh, Ferrari took a controlling interest in Maserati. Um, they hadn't yet launched their Ferrari 360 car, and it was only developing 395 horsepower. So there might be some truth in that. Let's go a bit further in that and look at the history of both uh, Maserati and Ferrari. Uh, Maserati actually predates Ferrari by some considerable time. It was started in 1940. Uh, by five uh, Maserati brothers. They produced their first car in 1926. In 1937, the remaining uh, Maserati brothers sold their share in the company to the uh, Orsi family. Enzo didn't start his company, Scuderia Ferrari, until 1939. He was based in Modena. Uh, Maserati started in Bologna. But in 1941, they moved to Enzo's back door, essentially. The Maserati uh, factory and the original Enzo Ferrari uh, factory or a stone's throw uh, away from each other in uh, Modena. Maserati effectively invaded uh, Ferrari's territory. Much rivalry was had all the way through, um, effectively culminating in kind of the 1950s when they were uh, big, big rivals. But even after that, it, in the town, uh, in the homes and between workers, there was a massive rivalry between Ferrari and Maserati. And in fact, in uh, 1978, um, Enzo Ferrari re refused uh, the Italian president uh, a tour of the factory uh, because President uh, Pertini, uh, he rolled up in his official car, which was uh, a Maserati Quattroporte Royale. <laughs> Enzo, disgusted at this, then <laughs> refused him entry um, to the factory. Uh, Fiat, who had uh, owned 50% uh, of uh, Ferrari uh, since 1969, acquired Enzo's 40% share. That made them 90% owners of the company. Uh, the other 10% owned by Ferrari's second son and uh, only remaining son. He's still alive today. He owned the, uh, still owns the remaining 10% of Ferrari. Now, when we look at Maserati, in 1993, uh, Fiat owned 49% of Maserati, 
and they acquired uh, the other 51% from uh, Alejandro de Tomaso. You might know him from the de Tomaso Pantera, etc., etc. So now Fiat own 100% uh, of Maserati. Now in 1997, so this is just the year before the 3200 GT was launched, Fiat, uh, who is the parent company, put 50% um, of Maserati into Ferrari control. It was a uh, major rivalry, they always were, but now Maserati, who were in 1997 only sold 698 cars uh, to Ferraris um, just short of 2000. So now we get to 1998, Paris Motor Show and the launch of Maserati's new coupe, the 3200 GT. This was going to turn around the company uh, they had big plans to uh, open up sales in North America in 2001. In fact, they did that with the 4200 GT, which is uh, an evolution of this car. Maserati and Ferrari both shared the same managing director. So with the Ferrari lineup in 1998, at the time the 3200 GT was launched, would have been the 456M, the 550 Baronello, and the Ferrari 355. It wouldn't be replaced by the Ferrari 360 until the following year. In fact, it was launched at the Geneva Auto Salon in March of 1999. So Ferrari would have been acutely aware of this, the fact that Maserati were launching a car. So these were the last days of the 355. They had a brand new car to launch, the 360, just a few months later. Uh, Ferrari would have been rightly upset by the fact that uh, this kind of new kid on the block uh, with their 3200 GT car that was developed um, essentially from the, uh, the Quattroporti Evoluzione and Maserati Chamal. They quoted 365 horsepower for the car, or 370 PS. The 360 would only develop 395 horsepower. So it comes as no surprise to you that Ferrari didn't want to be usurped, as it were, uh, in a few months' time when they launched the 360. So they claimed 365 horsepower. The cars, in essence, <laughs> develop actually over 400 horsepower. Any cars that have been dynoed, the 3200s, um, they're doing between 409 and 412 horsepower consistently. That's why when I was driving this car during the, the little uh, review, I said it was kind of almost Alpha Julia kind of quick. Uh, the torque out of this thing is massive as well. 360 pound foot of torque. Uh, it only weighs about 1600 kilos as well. So it's not a particularly heavy car. And it goes some, and it feels every way uh, just as quick as that, as the, as the true numbers actually would suggest. So the 360 Modena uh, would use what was the final development of the Type 131 engine that can trace its development all the way back to the Ferrari Dino in V6 form. They added a couple of cylinders onto that and created the V8. And it was developed continually all the way through uh, 308s, 328s, 348s. Uh, 355 and eventually into the 360. Uh, for the replacement of the 360 they used <laughs> what was a development of the 3200 GT engine albeit with a flat plane crank uh, as opposed to a cross plane crank uh, a dry sump and that was essentially it an increase obviously in uh, bore to make it uh, 4.3 litres. So they made it naturally aspirated as well and made it rev like hell uh, to develop the horsepower. So the car that uh, Ferrari were going to launch in a few months time uh, was essentially using an outdated engine. I suspect that when they saw the 3200 engine they thought they could adapt that into their cars and in fact they did into the 430, into the 458 etc um, etc. Et so when you consider a car's performance a lot of it boils down to um, power to weight ratio. In fact, the uh, race series um, that I do here in the UK uh, in my BMW Endurance Racer um, are effectively arranged into classes as per power to weight. So an interesting investigation, I had a little look and see um, what uh, the 3200 GT uh, was doing with 410 horsepower 
weighing in at about 1.6 tons because uh, there's 30 kilos difference between the manual and the uh, and the autos and you come up with uh, if you use <laughs> if you use Ferrari's figures of uh, 365 and 1590 kilos uh, it comes up at 229.5 doesn't sound a lot and again the 4200 uh, developed into this was uh, it generated a, a little bit more horsepower uh, another um, 20 horsepower say it actually developed less torque in the end and torque as we all know is what uh, generates uh, not to 60 times an acceleration but if you use the real figures uh, something like uh, 410 horsepower of bhp 1590 you come up at 257 brake horsepower per ton now the reason this car feels particularly uh, quick that 257 brake per ton it's exactly the same uh, as uh, an Aston uh, Vantage V8 <laughs> launched in 2008. It's as quick as a BMW M6 in 2005. Uh, a Mitsubishi Lancer Evo FQ400, that's the big one. It's got 258 um, brake per ton. Uh, the Ferrari 456 GT, here we go. Uh, it develops 257 so do you really want your old maserati 3200 gt developing a higher part of weight ratio than your very own ferrari 456 and i think this is why this car was nipping on the toes it was launched with a price tag of um, just over 60,000 and about 62 um, seven or thereabouts for the uh, the automatic 456 would have been uh, you know astronomically more expensive than that some other cars uh, in history dodge challenger the hemi seven liter hemi has got the same part of weight ratio already rs5 in 2010 the alpina b7 v8 tesla model 3 the long range one and the all-wheel drive is 256 brake per ton um jag f type supercharged a uh, five liter v8 the list goes on and on and on e46 m3 gtr audi r8 4.2 from 2012 and even um the maserati gran turismo the 4.7 v8 it was 453 horsepower but it weighed a pretty lardy 1780 kilos and it gives this car a, a higher part of weight ratio um, of 257 versus the Gran Turismo's 254 brake per ton um, and the list goes on and on and on a Spree S4 three and a half Fiat a turbo from 96 um, these are all well well respected cars okay so let's look at uh, the Ferraris we've mentioned the 456 um, a GT five and a half liter V12 um, and it's got 257.3 brake horsepower per ton the 360 Modena, well, the car that was to be launched a, a few months later than this, is uh, 400 brake horsepower, weighs 1390, it's got 287.7. So, yes, it's, uh, it's lighter than the 3200 GT. They're claiming 400 brake horsepower for it. Why would you then turn around and claim that this car um, has got uh, 410? It doesn't make sense. And in fact, what they intended to do was then use this uh, development of this engine in the uh, the 430 550 Maranello comes up at 282 uh, brake per ton again glorious v12 485 horsepower and a fairly lardy uh, 1716 kilos let's look at it a slightly different way let's look at it in torque and we know that torque generates acceleration and horsepower uh, generates top speeds effectively overcoming the drag uh, and wind resistance so let's consider the torque figures whilst the 360 Modena uh, was uh, reported at 400 brake horsepower it only developed 275 foot pounds of torque the 3200 GT uh, they claimed developed 362 pounds foot of torque so that's another essentially 90 foot pounds of torque but of course it's the turbos that are giving all the additional uh, torque across the rev range so you can imagine it got them thinking well what are we going to do to do better than that in conclusion whilst it doesn't answer the question outright you could understand that at a corporate level why ferrari would be keen to suppress the 
uh, actual figures for this car. If they were going to develop the 4200 GT, which has used essentially the same block as this, uh, dropped the turbos, made it normally aspirated, but they added a, a one liter engine capacity um, increase to this car. They kept it as a cross plane crank. Uh, they developed the same engine to 4.3 uh, liters for the 430. They were very quick to use the technology that they had inherited from Maserati to develop their own line of engines. They became known as Ferrari Maserati engines because Maserati then continued to use Ferrari engines right the way through uh, until the MC20 of 2020, uh, which was an in-house developed Maserati engine. So you can't believe everything uh, that it says on the tin. That's why this car drives as well as it does. That's why it's one of those little special gems uh, that was perhaps detuned a little bit in the 4200 in order to fit in with Ferrari's uh, view that basically uh, Maseratis were um, there to be more affordable but yet more uh, luxurious and for a completely different market to them. Why would they want the, uh, the cheaper car to have the, dare I say it, better engine? And I know they went on to develop the engine for their own purposes. Why not? If someone else has got better technology from you, it's natural in the corporate world to take over the company. So that's what happened back in 1998 when this was launched. That's why the 3200 GT, in my opinion, is a much better car uh, than the 4200 GT. Uh, the normally aspirated version uh, with the transaxle uh, gearbox at the back. Made in tiny numbers and I just love the fact that the car is actually better than what they actually stated at the time. For those of you that haven't driven a 3200, please go and do so. It's just one of those unique experiences, uh, the luxurious uh, interior, the hull of the twin turbo V8 um, and its own little place in history. I'm not sure what uh, Ferrari historians might say to my little comments here. I've enjoyed researching it and you can understand uh, why it's an interesting little story. As always, please comment below. I'm sure I've got some of the facts wrong, that when you get the same managing director, you get the same board of directors controlling two companies, uh, they will manipulate those to serve their own purposes. More to come. Hopefully we'll do a little bit more in the 3200 GT. Uh, I have every intention of doing a little bit more with the Alfa Giulia as well. Thanks for watching. Uh, till the next time. All the best now. Thank you. Bye-bye.